from 2014. No bolt report on Sunday because of racing. Disappointing, but the great man deserves the occasional day off. The Ebola message does not match precautions in the U.S. Aid workers clocking off shifts in Africa and returning to the U.S. along with tourists was always going to be a spread vector. The U.S. was aware of the issue before a victim left Africa and fell sick in Texas. He has died, and now two of his nurses have been infected. One hopes that both nurses survive unharmed. But who else has been infected? How? There have been several protocol failures. Luckily, the disease relies on intimate contact through bodily fluid to be contracted. It is not airborne. Otherwise, more would be infected. Imagine if jihadis could weaponize it. Jihadi dreams. It is wonderful Obama has decided to fight ISIS and not merely aid them. But it isn't enough to drop bombs on civilians to win a war. There will need to be people on the ground. There needs to be a commitment to win. Terrorists claim to be Islamic but do things that are not Quranic, like cross-dressing, killing Muslims, desecrating holy sites, and bringing Islam into disrepute. Also reprehensibly assigning to Allah works of the devil, they aren't the only terrorists. Look at Ukraine, North Korea, China, Cuba, Venezuela, Argentina, Zimbabwe. But they have an international fan club and patronage from the UN and press. It turns out Bush was right on weapons of mass destruction and the press have suppressed the fact to support Democrats. And now ISIS have access to the warheads that were made in some cases by US contractors. A pranked hospital patient, male, woke up to find he was wearing panties. One thought that only happened to jihadis. Jihadis are known to wear women's clothes shortly before engaging in terrorist hits. ABC discovers a new left wing. ABC bias encompasses abusing the uniform of Australian Defence Force. Patriotism is racism. ABC defames pre-election Victorian government over porn ring allegations. A disgruntled former advisor to Bailu, who was dismissed when Napthin became premier, has made his claims now for the first time shortly before an election. His claims seem unlikely, but that will still excite the ABC. 7.30 report acknowledges criminal infiltration of CFMEU after Gillard weakened protections with fair work. The program details how bikey gangs have gotten involved. Slush funds would be excellent at laundering drug money. An ALP senator uses Pravda to abuse Prime Minister Mr. Abbott. No reason why they would, but they have. Mixed issues. Australia's National Gallery changes direction by becoming competent, hiring a good person after their stolen Indian artifact debacle. The embarrassing Richard Flanagan has won a literary prize and made a statement that he was embarrassed to be Australian because the Prime Minister said coal was an efficient power source. If Richard Flanagan doesn't love it here, he can leave. Palmer drops defamation claim. New Deputy Premier for New South Wales is a member with only six months' cabinet experience. He's a former policeman with some 22 years of experience. He has a good team and should do a great job. Hostage siege in brothel in New South Wales had three men holding two other men and two women and obscured the face of one of the brothel workers. But the ABC did not. Pistorius might have got more time if he had shot an intruder.